What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest dot OS. I have been using it for a long time and this is the 10th August 2021 build again. If you don't know how to flash this ROM, you can check out the cards or the description and whatever things I have flashed or installed on this particular ROM will be present in the description box below, so do not worry. Now a couple of notes over here is that there are separate builds for gapps and vanilla build. I have flashed the gapps included build as usual and this particular ROM actually supports ANX camera over here fully so there is no issues with ANX camera version 190R and you can also use the OT updates but you have to install an APK for that. The stock launcher looks like this and to the left of the home screen we still have the Google's Discover page. Swiping up gets you to the app drawer and swiping down gets you to the quick settings panel and this color if you are noticing the accent color I mean is actually from the wallpaper itself so there is an engine for that in the dot west so if you go into the settings and right now if you go into the customization and from here in the customization if you go into the lab you can see there is this kind of theme engine and with that you can get the accent color from the wallpaper itself so that is very cool so this accent color i got from the wallpaper so if you change your wallpaper your accent color of the whole ui will change talking about the quick setting panel yes it still has the customization option and you can add plenty of toggles that whatever you need so from here let me just close it up let me show you what i have added i do have the dark theme and the auto rotate battery saver etc android 11 screen recorder is still there we get the device audio and the microphone audio recording and do not disturb hotspot data saver the heads up you can disable the night light option is there also there is a high refresh rate option the always on display option is there you can enable it if you want to the do not disturb or the sound toggle is there if you tap and hold on it you get the volume panel just like this and let me tell you everything almost is working super fine here and this is how the brightness slider toggle looks like i mean the bar over here and we have the auto brightness changing option or manually you can control it if it says a that means if it's on auto brightness now one thing that is missing from this particular build even in the display settings you won't get any dc dimming option so the dc dimming option is completely removed right now so you have to keep that in mind now on this particular rom while daily driving i have seen one particular change that is new that is the, the camera if you notice the front camera over there has a little bit of black border and once you are doing video calls and stuff a lot more of that black border but sometimes even with that black border i have seen with the front camera there is slight bit of glow in there so that is how it is like in video calls it's much better but it still has a little bit of glow whenever you have a white subject behind that like notch over there so you have to keep that in mind but still it's a lot better experience than it was previously so it does give you this thick circular black kind of border over there while using the front camera if you're in video calls and stuff so that is a very good improvement for the dot ways now widgets in the home screen are working totally fine and the whole device stays very very smooth no issues whatsoever the stock camera here is the very old kind of looking google camera so i am not really using it Talking about the cameras, well, ANX camera I have flashed over here and with that everything almost is working fine as you can see we still have the pro video mode and stuff and in the normal video mode let me actually show you the 0.66x and the 2x telephoto lens is working fine and even like with portrait camera and stuff everything is working fine with the front camera as well this is how it looks like so front camera portrait mode and stuff everything should be working fine here with the ANX camera version 190R but for that you need to flash magic and stuff all the links for that in the description so do not worry this is how the about section looks like we have the dot os version 5.1.3 and it shows gapps because this is the gapps included variant if you go into the android version you get this droid on time logo right there and if you scroll down we have the dot os version again and the device code name is sweet because this is the redmi note 10 pro and we have the android version as android 11 of course let me go back the security patch here is latest of august 5th 2021 the build date 10th august 2021 and the stock kernel here shows as 4.14.180 in the system panel we do get this system updater let me go back we have the status bar tuner as well headset bluetooth etc customization is there also the volte icon is present and right now as you can see the volte icon shows up right there so yeah volte is working super fine no issues with that let me go back we have the gestures here we have the power menu the gesture navigation and in the gesture navigation settings we do not have the like gesture bar length changing option but that is present in the customization i'll show you that 
here we get the two button and three button navigation as well let me go back we have the quickly open camera and stuff so double tapping the power button does open the camera quickly and we have the gboard as the default keyboard here talking about the settings panel everything is much more spacier if you're noticing so it is very like good for one-handed friendly usage and if you go into the customization this is how it looks like and over here we have the wallpaper changing option you get plethora of wallpapers like these dot os wallpapers and stuff these are getting downloaded with the wi-fi so you can choose from these wallpapers a lot of wallpapers are there also lineage os wallpapers and stuff are there always on display kind of thing you can customize we have the edge lighting edge lighting works fine like edge lighting notification and stuff you have this custom color or the notification color choosing option screen of animation you can change that too and here we also have the status bar icons customization i mean the whole status bar ui customization over here so you can change the battery style if you're noticing on the top right of the screen you will see the battery icon is getting changed and also we have the battery percentage then the show clock and clock position you can change also we have the traffic indicator and you can customize that too battery charging light you can customize that too over here let me go back we have the quick setting panel and there it shows this kind of like things tile titles you can disable on the quick setting panel then column and row number customization is also there for the quick settings panel let me go back now talking about this app lock i feel this is a little weird let me show you why like the telegram app i have locked over here but if I try to unlock it, as you can see, of course it shows this app is locked and it asks me to touch the fingerprint scanner. But yes, it does show you the notification still in the notification panel. Whenever you get a notification for that particular locked app, it will still show you the contents of that particular notification. So that is how it is. But one more thing is that if you have locked multiple apps, let me tell you that right now, as you can see, still it shows locked. But if you just hand over your phone to someone who has access when the phone is unlocked normally, then they can simply go into this app lock section and then just simply unlock that particular app and that app will be unlocked. So yeah, without any security pin or something, someone can unlock or lock a particular app if you hand them over your phone when the like phone is unlocked. So yeah, this is kind of a weird thing that I have noticed, but otherwise the app lock is working perfectly fine as you can see. So no issues whatsoever with that. But yeah, this is one thing that I do not like about this ROM that the app lock is very easily accessible and it does not ask for any kind of pin or pattern or even a fingerprint scanner authentication to actually lock or unlock a particular app from here and of course from the lab here you can actually disable this if you don't want this lab option but yes this option is there that is cool let me go back we have the clock face now in this clock face we definitely get plethora of lock screen clocks but let me tell you there is no android 12 kind of lock screen clock but we do have this fluid is funny sammy shape shift kind of clock samsung etc is there but again no android 12 kind of big font lock screen clock here in the buttons it's pretty similar we have this invert layout and stuff let me go back we have these themes option and over here you get to choose from these many options plethora of themes are there i mean the fonts and stuff and the icon packs you can choose from here the icon shapes as well you can customize and a lot more options are there let me go back in the system we have the whole power button toggle torch brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar these things are there and very handy feature as you can see and we do have the double tap to sleep on the status bar double tap to sleep on the lock screen as well and we have the volume panel you can enable it from the left side of course and this is how the volume panel looks when you enable it from the left side let me just disable that and for the screenshot let me show you we do have the scrolling or long screenshot option then you have the delete and edit option so three finger screenshot gesture is working fine the size of the pill bar is quite long right now but you cannot change the thickness of it but you definitely can make it hidden let me actually show you if you swipe all the way to the left for this pill bar option the whole pill bar is gone and right now as you can see of course it is working fine but there is no pill bar and you can actually increase the size of it by just swiping on that as you can see so yeah it actually works fine and we also have the pocket mode and the advanced reboot is there let me show you the power menu this is how it looks like smart home controls of google and that is working fine also we have the advanced controls and you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here you can enable the music visualizer and the lock screen cover art or the media artwork and stuff let me go back and from here to the launcher grid we have up to this 5x5 grid and you can also choose this 2x2 grid or something if you want it that way and we have the maintainers names over here so you can donate to the developers i guess from this particular panel so yeah this rom has plethora of customizations jumping to the display settings this is how it looks like we have the dark theme the night light and inside live display we also get the color calibration and here we have the screen timeout and stuff rotation settings is there and the double tap to wake is working fine also you have the display cutout but you don't really actually need to use a display cutout here because the camera has that punch hole kind of thing where you get the black borders 
Now from here in the device specific settings, we have the 120 Hz or 60 Hz switching option. And of course, I've been using it with the 120 Hz, no issues whatsoever. The accent color, there are a couple of presets. You can change it to that. But if you have enabled that theme engine, it won't work. And we have the headline and body fonts option and the icon shapes are there. That is all for the display settings. Now jumping into the sound settings, this is how it looks like. Again, looks very cool, the whole UI. And we have the vibrate for calls and stuff. Then the dial pad tone, screen locking sound, charging sound, charging vibration, etc. And then if you scroll down, we have the adaptive sound option. You can enable that if you want to. Also the Mi Audio Dirac is there. And from here you can choose any kind of preset that you will want to. I have been using it with the Youth Edition and with that the sound quality via the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well is great. No issues whatsoever. Enable Hi-Fi option is also there. And these are the presets that you get also. Jumping into the battery settings, this is how it looks like. You can tap here to see the full battery usage. And of course the battery life here is decent. I've got about six to seven hours of screen on time over here. Yes, sometimes it gives you five hours of screen on time with moderate usage in my opinion. So yeah, the battery life is decent. It's not bad at all. And the fast charging also works, but it is a little bit slower than my liking. So that's how it is. And in the thermal profiles, we have these options like default benchmark camera, browser, etc. you can choose from. Let me go back. We have these full charge lasts about how long and the screen on time right here. The battery saver is there, adaptive battery option is there. But again, it does not show you any option for the charging cycle or the battery temperature or the current battery or design battery capacity. Now in the security, this is how it looks like. We have the fingerprint option. And if you go into the settings, we have the power button instantly locks and the scramble pin layout. So let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed now. Let's just double tap on the status bar. And right now, if I tap the fingerprint scanner, and as you can see, yes, the fingerprint scanner is not the fastest I have seen but it unlocks fine as you can see. So yeah, definitely the experience is not the fastest, but it unlocks fine. So very reliable fingerprint scanner experience over here. It unlocks 100% of the time without any issues. As you can see right now, the speed has improved quite a lot. So no issues whatsoever. The fingerprint scanner works 100% of the time without any issues. Talking about the face unlock, let me actually set it up. So setting up the face unlock is done. Right now, let's just double tap on the status bar and double tap to wake. And as you can see, it unlocks. Let me show you one more time. So once it's using the front camera, just notice how the black border will look. So yeah, the face unlock works super fine here. No issues with that. Talking about the recent funnel, this is how it looks like. We can take a screenshot, select some text, and you can go to the split screen mode or pin a particular app from right here. And if you go all the way to the left, you can clear all the apps from the RAM. This is how the stock dialer looks like. Vault calling and stuff works fine, but there is no call recording option at least as of right now. So yeah, this is a pixel dialer simply. So right now I have opened a couple of apps in memory. So let me open them one by one and let's see what apps are in memory. So Chrome, yes, Chrome is still in memory. And this test UFO gives you about 120 FPS. So yeah, it is working fine. Now Twitter still in memory and the Play Store app, yes, it is still in the RAM. YouTube is still in memory and Instagram as well is in the memory. And let me open some more apps. Yes, these are also in memory. So the RAM management here is no issues and everything with the RAM management is working fine. All the apps stays in memory and switching between apps seems to be super fine and everything is buttery smooth over here. Talking about the benchmarks here, the Android and Geekbench score of this particular ROM with a CPU stress test. Also the IR Blaster of this ROM, actually let me show you, is working fine as you can see over there. So the IR Blaster is not a problem on this particular ROM. The DRM Info stays as L1, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in this particular ROM in 1080p. So that is not a problem either. Safety net passes right out of the box here. Also, if you have flashed magisk and you're using magisk hide, safety net should also work as I'm using over here. So banking apps is not a problem at all. Talking about the Google Assistant, let me actually show you. Hey Google. As you can see, it is working fine. So Google Assistant is not a problem. Let me try one more keyword. Okay, Google. As you can see again, Google Assistant is not a problem here. Also, the Google Photos has unlimited backup. As you can see, it shows original quality, storage saver, and express. So that means you can get the unlimited Google Photos backup here. So the latest dot ways I have been daily driving on this particular ROM, but sometimes I have seen one issue. That is when I'm opening YouTube randomly, I would say it will happen once in a day with me at least that the whole UI freezes and it does not do anything. Like the video sound actually plays in the background, but the video freezes when I am playing that in YouTube. Like it happens very rarely, but I can't show you that. But sometimes the UI gets freezed 
So for that time being, I had to like force reboot the device by pressing and holding the power button for about 15 seconds maybe. So yeah, I had to do that couple of times. So maybe that will be fixed in the future update, but I'm not really sure why that happens. But sometimes I have seen frozen UI over here in this dot OS, except for that the whole ROM is actually working perfectly fine and the whole UI stays very smooth. Actually, it is buttery smooth in my opinion, other than the time when it freezes. So thank you so much for watching this video guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest dot OS on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. This is Sito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.